turn again, back the other way. This Jack Burton and Carolina has a touchdown. They're like, oh, well, we need real players. Oh. Okay, so can you quarterback? Sure. Another opportunity, spins out of a sack, throws it to the back of the end zone. He's got his man. Touchdown, New Orleans. He's gone, to baby. He's gone, baby. My goodness. Somebody cool off that man's feet because they're on fire. This is going to explode big time. The SFL Network on Twitch welcomes you to the following presentation of the Simulation Football League. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Baltimore. It's SFL action on Sunday evening. The Baltimore Vultures have welcomed the San Francisco Sharks into town. And we are just about ready for football. Andy Hamilton, along with Stephen Hacker at Vultures Field. Stephen, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Andy. Just ready to catch the beginning of this game. We have two teams set to do battle. Baltimore wearing their home team red and the Sharks in gray. A great, beautiful uniform matchup for us today as one of the teams that are top two in the power rankings and a team ranked 12th are set to do battle. And it all starts right here on Twitch. Roy Gaines comes into the game second in the SFL in rushing heading into this week. What are you looking for out of him? Uh, he's an explosive running back. I mean, I would expect him to get in the 25 uh, carry total and he could probably reel in about five or six receptions as well. And the Baltimore offense looking good and we'll see here at the coin toss who will receive. It looks like it is Baltimore's choice and they have chosen to receive winds of seven miles per hour here in Baltimore, Maryland. And we are just about set to do battle. We have Jeff Lowe on stats. We want to thank Jeff right here at the top of the broadcast for being a part of the stats team and for doing our game. If you want to get more involved with the SFL, stats is a perfect place to get involved. We have plenty of opportunity and plenty of games that need statisticians statisticians and uh i tell you what steven i'm not very good at math but i know how to do stats um so for any of you interested in joining you can do your own games which means right now while you're watching the game you could do the stats all it is is putting in how many yards uh the play went for and which number the player did i think we are just about all set there and we will be ready for kickoff steven you do a lot of games on stats uh, and we thank you as well as Jeff for that. Um, and we're looking to add more members for the stats team. Ball is on the tee for San Francisco. And we are just about ready to kick off here. We are underway. Baltimore will get the ball first. And it's a short kick returned off the right-hand side. Spinning. Oh, what a return out to the 34. Got me a little excited there, Steve. Yeah, we're in good hands here tonight with Jeff Lowe on stats. Um, run a couple of games with him and... He, he, he took it on real quick, and like he said, you know, it's it's not too much of a thing to do. It's uh, You can just watch long as the game is going, and, and for me, I like it. It helps me lock into the game on, on another level, so thanks for being here, Jeff. To all in the chat, Stephen Mullinex along with TJ Kags SFL, and uh, oh, a first play near interception. That one was well read by the San Francisco defense and jumping over to make the defensive play was Chris Leon, the defensive end. Interesting to see him take his hand off the ground and drop back into coverage, but a great job by the defensive lineman there. The San Francisco defense has had ups and it's had downs, not the strong suit of the Sharks uh, team, but on the first play, they defend the out route well. Here on the second play from scrimmage, Dazzo, Tosses out to Gaines. Gaines off the right-hand side. Picks up nine and a half to the 44. Yeah, great reception by T. Roy Gaines. Brought down by Jacob Gustafson, the safety. Has a... Uh, playing now in his second season for the Sharks. 6'3", 225. One of, I would feel, one of the more underrated safeties in the SFL. 
for look out of the Sharks. This looks like a dump off to Gaines off the left-hand side with room. Gaines across the 50 and down to the 45-yard line, first and 10. Yeah, and I think you're going to see a lot of that strategy tonight from Baltimore. I think they're going to look to get T-Roy Gaines involved in, um, through the air and on the ground and just let him do his, you know, do his work. He's, you know, second, uh, second rushing yards going into this week, and he's also, he's tied for first in touchdowns, so he's a premier back in this league. Five wins for Baltimore, looking to try and make it six today, and the San Francisco Sharks wearing gray stand in their way. Dazzo fires a one and it grabbed there by Daly Holder for six. Yeah, over the middle, one-headed grab by Holder and just nice, nice awareness. Good athleticism to get up and get that ball and then bring it in. Rizza Rab Riz Rizabit, is that the name? Says he's got St. Louis and Oklahoma City on the TV and us on his phone. He's in SFL heaven right now. And I tell you what, Rizabit, every day that I'm in the SFL, I'm in SFL heaven because I just love this league so much. Tackled there one yard shy of the line to gain. It'll bring up third and one for Baltimore. And Chad Guy was on that tackle, and you're going to hear his name called a lot from the Sharks' defense. He's a, he's a ball hawk from the linebacking position. 4-4 look out of San Francisco, and the 4-4 is interesting here. Flag, so a free play for Dazzo. Dumps it off to Gaines, who stood up and dropped, but I believe the flag will give them a first down. Yeah, we'll see what the ref called here. Interesting that Gaines almost has uh, as many receptions as I said he would have at the beginning of the game. <laughs> well, there you go. The neutral zone infraction negates the tackle for loss there. San Francisco actually played that really well. If it weren't for the penalty, they would have been off the field here, and Baltimore would have had to decide between a long field goal. Oh, and some jabber in there at the line if you look to the top of your screen here. Three wide for Baltimore. Dazzo sees this and will check the play at the line. A nickel 3-3 look out of the San Francisco Sharks. They look like they might bring blitz. They will bring one off the edge. Quick toss, and that is good for eight yards. And now Baltimore will go into hurry-up mode. Lloyd Graham Jr., the tight end with the catch. And here goes Gaines off the right side, trying to spin his way. He'll get to the 20, and Baltimore enters the SFL red zone. And off again, Gaines up the middle, and he will pick up another seven yards. Yeah, rapid fire action now from Baltimore. They like what they see out of the Sharks defense. Dazzo fires, caught in the middle. It's Graham Jr. again, down to the three, and Baltimore is threatening. Gazzo gives Gaines, dropped shy of the line. He is uh, tackled there. That was D.D. Sachs on the play, and Gaines so far has been running well. Four attempts, 14 yards. Bunch formation, the three receivers to the bottom of your screen. For two, look out of the Sharks. Dazzo under center. Gaines the lone man. They'll give to Gaines, and he will rumble his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Vultures. Yeah, you weren't going to stop him that time. Gaines trucked a guy on his way in, and he wanted six points, and he got it. The first drive for the Baltimore Vultures goes 13 plays, 66 yards, and a two-yard rushing touchdown from T. Roy Gaines caps it off. Yeah, averaging about 3.2 yards per carry on that on that drive. You know, uh, the Sharks invested heavily in their front seven, so you, you would like to see them maybe slow him down. 3.2 is not over the top but he was involved heavily in the flats you know in the passing game they gotta they gotta figure out a way to slow him down but this is gonna be a long night and to go in the first a long opening drive four minutes worth of offense for the baltimore vultures and now san francisco will have a chance 
On their offensive side of the ball, they send Gabriel Manning deep. One on paper, one of the most expensive wide receivers in the SFL. Do the first time he touches the ball, it's a deep kick, and oh, he will have my. to take a knee. And that's, I tell you what, Stephen, that's one way to neutralize a good kick returner. Yeah, Shark Tarkington with an absolute just cannon makes Ga uh, Manning feel that at the uh, you know about two yards out of his own end zone. So. Had to kneel on it, and yeah, Manning is really dangerous. I'll try to get you his kick return numbers uh, on his next kick return, but yeah, he's ever-present to take it to the house. So the quarterback for San Francisco, Angus McLean, under center, a week three rookie signing. The first give is to the back, and he will be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Adrian Powers loses a yard. Yeah, not, not really where I'd like to see San Francisco go. Um, I think their strength is with Angus McLean and their wide receivers, Matt Burnham and uh, Gabriel Manning. That's that's where I'd like to see the Sharks' uh, offensive attack come from is through the air. Might have tried to catch the Vultures off guard on that first play from scrimmage, but now they'll be backed up for second and long. They give to Powers again with some room. Powers, Ooh. a good run all the way up to the 28. That'll bring up third and short. And the aggressiveness early from the Sharks running the ball. You know, Baltimore's a really strong defense, and yeah, I think they're just trying to come out and punch him in the mouth, like you said, Andy, and maybe surprise him a little bit. Third and a deuce. Here for McLean. He will throw for it. McLean, well protected, fires, and that is caught by Matt Burnham. The tight end of the 38, a first down right in front of Hendricks Thornberry. And Angus McLean, the rookie, I really like this guy. I've watched all three of his games so far. And uh, just, I really like what the Sharks have in this guy. Matt Burnham, the tight end. He was a former tight end, now turned wide receiver. The tight end for the Sharks now is LJ Smith, an undrafted rookie. Back for McLean, fourth three look out of the Vultures. They look like they're bringing blitz. They will back out of it. McLean throws the out route there. That is caught by Gabriel. No, out of bounds. Manning ruled out. And that's that's tough right there. You know, your, your top wide receiver, you know, had a chance to make a play and just couldn't quite keep his toe in bounds. And, you know, you want the positive yards, but keep throwing him the ball and he'll make plays happen for you. Angus McLean, one of the newcomers in the SFL. Love having him here. Very glad he joined the league. If you're looking for an awesome football community or looking to get on the field, this is the place for you. You can join our Discord. McLean rockets one Ooh. deep off the hands and incomplete. McLean, McFly could not corral it. Yeah, and they call that the no-fly zone over there. You know, Giovanni Bolt looks like came over with a little bit of help as well. And that's just a tough throw to make. The rookie overthrew him a little bit, but... You know, give it some more time, and they'll, they'll iron that out. Like I said, I like this guy's talent. I like what he brings to the tape. Fly, Thornberry, Willis, and Giovanni Bolt. A lockdown secondary here for the Baltimore Vultures, and it'll be tough sledding for McLean in the offense. Pumps once, fires the out route there, is caught this time by Manning for five, but it'll be short of the sticks, and the Sharks are going to have to punt. Yeah, the pump fake was good. I mean, pump fake to the to a strong side of the field and then looked all the way through his progressions back to the opposite side and hit Manning. Just didn't give him enough room to turn up field. You always have to give enough room to turn up, Stephen. That's the that's what you need. All right. <laughs> turn up to eleven, I guess. I'm old, Andy. You can't you can't speak you can't speak that modern lingo with me, man. <laughs> the punt is away and they will get a short return out to the 24. So now the Baltimore offense comes on back out. Mike Dazzo, the first drive, five for six, seven and a half. Passing attempt, they go 12 yard, or 12 plays, 66 yards, and cap it off with a T-Roy Gaines touchdown. But the San Francisco right. defense showed some sparks. I just want to see T-Roy Gaines get the ball some more. I formation, two backs in the back, and they will dump it out to Gaines. Dazzo takes a shot, and Gaines will spin cycle his way out to the 32, an eight-yard pickup. Dazzo got rocked. I don't know if you saw that, Steven. Yeah, that was Sim Franco Jr. Just after about four spins, he had had enough, and Sim Franco finally laid him out. Second and two. 
Second and two from the 32. They need to get out to the 34 to move the chains. This is a 4-4 look out of San Francisco. They're going to play bump at the bottom of the screen. They give to Gaines with room. Oh Gaines, my goodness. through one. He's off to the races. T-Roy Gaines, one man to beat, and he yes. will do it with an escort. T-Roy Gaines scores. Touchdown, Baltimore Vultures. Just a dynamite play. I mean, the blocking up front. The Sharks were showing that they were committing to the run, and, and all the Vultures linemen picked up somebody, got a got a helmet on a helmet, and he took off. And a great effort by Chad Guy to try to catch Gaines. He did catch Gaines, but couldn't quite wrap him up. And just phenomenal play by T-Roy Gaines. I love it. The six-yard touchdown run from T-Roy Gaines, and he had to turn on the afterburners there. Chad Guy, though, with some speed, did get a hand on him. So Baltimore, one play, 76 yards down the field. They double their point total from 7 to 14 as long as they can hit this extra point. Up and through 14-0 Baltimore over San Francisco. Yeah, Baltimore on their first two possessions have looked really, really good. Let's cap off that, that one. Two plays, 76 yard drive with the 68 yard run by T. Roy Gaines. So Baltimore's looked really good on their first two possessions and it'll be interesting to see, you know, how the Sharks defense react. San Francisco looked good on their last drive. You know, they did manage to turn out seven, seven plays, but they, you know, they had to punt. So, you know, I'd like to build off of that, maybe screen together a couple more first downs, get into scoring position for your team and kind of close this margin because it's still early in this game. You can you can come back. You can't give up. Manning has to take another knee, so they will start at the 20 yard line and loading over the T Roy Gaines long run. T Roy says he had a bad work week. He's been waiting for this game, and we've been waiting to join you here in Baltimore, T Roy. So welcome and congratulations. Angus McLean Ooh. fires Burnham with a catch for six, and that is a little bit more of what San Francisco needs is yardage. And Papa Dazzo meets Burnham over the middle and just uh, just gives him a nice little hello. Long-time members of the Simulation Football League, if uh, you are trying to get involved, you can bring everyone. Bring your family, bring your friends, and everyone can become a player and get on the field starting this week. And off here to Powers with room, and Powers is out to the 35, a first down for the Sharks. Man, I got now I got to praise the Sharks offensive line. I mean, that was a great hole for Adrian Powers to run through. A little bit of work up front by the defensive tackle, but either regardless, nice hole and then a big hit by Giovanni Bolton in the play. San Francisco's last drive went seven plays and 23 yards. They are already at 15 yards on two plays here on this current drive. McLean, short drop, fires here. That is caught out to the 49-yard line. Excuse me, Gabriel Manning, the star receiver, gets a good grab. Yeah, and I like the connection between Angus McLean and Gabriel Manning. Uh, the, his first game, Angus, Angus McLean's first game, uh, they had a hard time scoring points, but there at the end, I think he threw two touchdowns to Gabriel Manning late, and I think that was kind of the building block. That was what I was looking for. And I think you're going to see that connection grow throughout the course of this season. Manning working on Kaz McFly. Shotgun look here for the Sharks. McLean stands well protected, dumps it off here to Manning, who is able to get out across the 50-yard line. Now his third catch for 27 yards. Yeah, a little dink and dunk here and there. And then just maybe kind of catch the defense off guard a little bit, take a shot deep downfield. That you know, Matt Burnham is kind of their big play guy, I think, uh, as far as deep passing. So I, you know, maybe they're trying to lull the Baltimore defense to sleep a little bit. Devin is McLean. He will throw again. Tries to float one. Oh. It sits on the back of the defender and almost gets taken away. He was trying to find Manning. Yeah, off the hands of Manning onto the back of Amon takes, and it kind of rolled around for a little bit. Before it finally hit the turf that before uh in some of the other football leagues around the world so 
a very realistic play here as game or as takes tries to take yeah, it away and then it just hangs there, there and too many Baltimore vultures try and get their hand in the pot and unfortunately can't come up with it and it'll be third and three. And you're not you're not gonna see that in many other games out there. That was that's uh, great physics in game physics there. It's wonderful. Wins to the bottom of the formation. Gabriel Manning working out of the slot here. That's a good matchup if they can find him. Two backs in the backfield for Angus McLean to throw. McLean fires, caught by Burham. Oh, they're going to mark him short of the sticks. I don't know about that one. You know, it looked like he was there, but, uh, you know, the ref, you got to trust the ref's call. You know, if you do have a coach's challenge, you can challenge the spot. Uh, and a fourth and, fourth and one, I don't know if I, if I run the ball here. You don't spend a lot of money on your running back, so I, I, I would be looking to maybe draw him off sides. Offense still on the field. Offset to the right is Powers. They will snap it. McLean to throw. Fires an Ooh. out route. Call first down. Sharks out of bounds. It's the tight end, LJ Smith. His first catch of the day moves the chains. Man, and I'm 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 jumping in my seat, man. That was uh I wasn't expecting him to snap it. And then after he threw the ball to LJ Smith, he kind of ran back behind the line. I didn't even know they, they were gonna get the first down. So great job by the Sharks to convert there. Now you gotta you gotta push this thing forward a little bit. You're still just outside of field goal range. Three receivers wide. The one split off the line for McLean. Well protected in the pocket. McLean floats one. It's caught inside the 20. Gabriel Manning. And again, that connection right there. I mean, it's working for him. That's the the second time they've run that play and got a big completion out of it. So. Yeah, just right where it needed to be. Great throw by the rookie quarterback. I can't tell if he was trying to throw it to LJ Smith or Gabriel Manning. It ended up in the hands of Manning, but Smith was standing right there. Easily could have accidentally taken it away. But it's a first and 10 in the SFL red zone for the Sharks. McLean deep drop, pumps once, tries to float one. That is hauled in by Smith. Smith spins and Amon takes will take him down at the 11. McLean again uses that pump fake to kind of free up the defense, make everybody kind of freeze, and it gives LJ Smith enough time to get outside and make that completion. Almost got the first down. A spread everyone out, three wide with a tight end on the top of the formation. Baltimore has been held in check on the defensive line. They give to Powers here, who powers forward for a first down to the five. It's first and goal, San Francisco. And now a fresh set of downs at the five. I think the Sharks, you know, there's blood in the water and the Sharks are on the hunt. I think that blood you're referring to is just simply the Baltimore Vultures uniforms. They are very red today. <laughs> and, They're uh, getting a lot of love in the chat, though. Oh, tries to throw the slant. It's caught by Burnham, and he is a yard shy. They'll put him at the one, and that will end the first quarter. 14-0 Baltimore on top, but the San Francisco Sharks are knocking at the door. We'll be right back. It's the SFL presented by APM Music. The Simulation Football League broadcast on Twitch is presented by APM Music, Production Music Library, and Custom Music House. By Fuel, Beyond Imagination. Visit the all-new sflinteractive.net today. By Map Doyle Designs, the official branding partner of the SFL. And by MediaTek Institute, turn your passion into your profession. Brought to you by Airviews United by Drone. Visit airviews.com to see more drone footage. Airviews.com. Back here in Baltimore, the San Francisco Sharks are knocking on the door. Three wide here from the one. Four three look out of the Vultures. Powers to the left of McLean. Angus throws the out route. Caught. Touchdown, LJ Smith. And the San Francisco Sharks strike. That didn't look like, yeah, this is a great, great touchdown throw by Angus McLean hitting the receiver on the on the out route, and six points for the Sharks. Isaiah Moss, the wide receiver who was out there open in the flat for the reception, but either way, six points for San Francisco. They strike quickly after giving up 14 points and get on the board. 
Yeah, and the, the Sharks needed, they needed points there. That was a good drive by them. You know, again, like I said, the, the seven plays on their first drive, they just didn't get a whole lot of yards out of it. And it, that drive, it really came together for them. So uh, I hope they can, can continue this momentum that they're, they're building. 80 yards, it was a very good drive, Steven. And you got to love when teams can respond after some adversity. They struggle on their opening drive, but come out on their second one and drive down the field and put some points on, cutting into this lead. Now they are going to look to the defense to get a stop against the Vultures' offense. Around look at the difference at the in how, how far the kick went. I'm sorry, Andy, but just the difference in the air yardage of the kick. Oh, no, you're absolutely right, and that's one of the things that comes with having a uh, star kicker like Baltimore has in Shark Tarkington is you're able to produce some of those longer uh, kicks down the field. And that, that affects the starting field position for each team where the Sharks are having to start at the 20. The, you know, here the Vultures are, they're at the 30. High formation, give to Gaines up the gut, and Gaines is shut down and dropped nearly immediately by San Francisco's defensive front. That was Franco Sanati on the tackle. Yeah, Sanati, one of the three down linemen for the Sharks defense. He's a big boy in there. I, I like watching him play. He started his career in Vancouver, came over to San Francisco after that year with the Legion, and now has been doing it for the Sharks. Dazzo fires the out route there, caught, and turning up field is Lloyd Graham Jr., first down to the 42. Yeah, Lloyd Graham Jr., he's been kind of quiet today. He's got, you no know, now it's his third reception, so he's been doing fine out of the flats, but I, I really like him. Um, as a secondary to, to Bishop Warfield and Daly Holder. I, I, I think they have really top-notch wide receivers in Baltimore. Nothing from Warfield today. No receptions for him. No targets, though. Flipping it out to Gaines here. Gaines able to escape one. Plows through a second and is out to the 45. Good wrap-up tackle there by Camden Hoffman, but Gaines moves the chains again. Yeah, and they're just going right back to what works. And... You know, four receptions now for T-Roy Gaines. And I, like I said, I think he's going to just, they're just going to keep feeding him all night. I mean, he's just successful in any any way you put him out there. You want him to catch the ball? Nah, he'll be successful. You want him to run the ball? Nah, he'll be successful. He's just a highlight reel. Safety man 71 in the chat. That is Angus McLean himself. Cheering on his defense as well as uh, plenty of other Baltimore Vultures fans in the chat here along with Mr. Dazzo himself. Hand off to Gaines and he is dropped right away. The San Francisco Sharks were all over that one. It's Sonati again. Yeah, Sonati and Chad Guy both gang tackled T-Roy Gaines there. Just met him right at the line of scrimmage and you know that's the kind of pressure you, you I think you expect to see from the Sharks front seven. Bread formation now from Baltimore. Four down linemen for the Sharks still, they will most likely bring all four. The handoff is up the middle to Gaines. Gaines spins through one, but only is able to scoot forward for three out to the 42. And this is a good opportunity for the Sharks defense here if they could get off the field. Yeah, and that looked like Barry Barkley that made the tackle there to stop T-Roy Gaines. So it's been a good collective effort now from the Sharks. You know, the, the Vultures come out and score on their first two possessions. Now, if the Sharks can hold them here, that'll pretty much force the Vultures to punt, and that's exactly what San Francisco needs. Punch to the bottom of the screen. They will play bump at the line. Dazzo oh. sidearms a first down throw to Bishop Warfield out to the 26. Yeah, first time we called his name tonight. Great reception gets the first down. The safety tried to jump up on that and intercept it and just, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, just missed it. Just mistimed the interception and it results in a first down for the Vulture. New set of downs at the 26. There's a look at T-Roy Gaines' numbers all the way up to 85 yards here, simply in the second frame of play. Hand off to him again. He'll only get one there. The Sharks have been good up the middle. Yeah, you know, again, they, they invested heavily in their front seven, so you'd expect that if you try to go uh, any kind of ISO or anything in the middle that they're going to they're gonna have that covered. Uh, I think that's why you're seeing T-Roy out in the flats so much. And San Francisco has not been afraid to play bump against these wide receivers. 
so far with mixed results. Three wide, the give to Gaines up the middle, tackled again, and they'll face a third and seven again. That is uh, Franco Sinati again in the middle of the, the field, just making all types of plays. Yeah, he's just, he's a trench warrior. I mean, the guy loves to fight. So, you know, you keep running at him, he's going to keep making plays. And again, they're going to play bump here. Watch Warfield. This was the same formation they had the last, the first down on, on third and seven. They will throw. Oh, he fell down. Good press Dazzo on the outside. fires to him anyways, and he's got the first down. Steven, did you see that? He fell over, was able to collect himself. Dazzo was patient and fired a first down rocket to the eight. Yeah, the press on the outside. You see him there as he was just recovering, but the press was by Camden Hoffman. Wow. Knocks down Bishop Warfield. He recovers and is able to make a spectacular play on the on the other side of that. Well, if you're Camden Hoffman, you can't play it better. You rock the guy at the line, you make him fall over, you're in position to play the ball, and somehow Dazzo fits it in the, the line to Warfield. Unbelievable scene. Now the toss out to Gaines. Gaines! Drop Chad Guy in the backfield. Yeah, he was a laser to that one. I mean, he just took off. Uh, T. Roy gains his head almost, and that was a great play by Chad Guy. Minutes to go in the second. San Francisco trying to come up with a stop here. Second and goal from the eight. 4 3 look out of the Sharks. Gaines will get the carry up the middle, and he is dropped yet again. The Sharks on him quickly. That was Ricky Flair, the inside linebacker. Woo! Ricky Flair. Nice play. <laughs> Oh my, that happened. Uh, <laughs> seven yards separates Baltimore from the end zone. Press coverage again from the Sharks. Three down linemen, they're gonna bring one of those outside. They'll bring the right side. And in touchdown catch, Lloyd Graham Jr. Put it on their face, touchdown vultures. Yeah, in traffic, was well covered, just reached out and snagged that thing one-handed. Great play. Great play by the tight end. I mean, come on, man. LGJ with an amazing one-handed snag, looking like Odell Beckham right there. LGJ looking like OBJ for the one-handed <laughs> touchdown grab. I mean, come on. It, you just can't get more phonetic than that, Steven. Yeah, and a credit to the offensive coordinator for the Vultures. You know, they, they kind of were stalling out a little bit there, had a, had a tough third down, but they converted and then were able to take it down and score. So three, three possessions and three touchdowns for the Vultures today. Junior says he saw this some months ago, and it's just so cool. Well, we think you are just so cool, Mr. Bob, for coming out and joining us on the broadcast. We want to thank you for being here. 21-7, uh, Baltimore on top of San Francisco. The Sharks had a good last drive. We'll see what they can do with it here. Manning will get a return this time, and he has the speed out across the 20 to the 23, but was bottled up there by the Vulture special teams. And again, just the, the, the difference in starting field position there. You know, the last drive for the Vultures, they were out at the 29. Even though Gabriel Manning got to return that one, it's still they're starting at the 23-yard line. So, you know, over time, that, you know, that can force you into a punt or maybe you lose out on a field goal just because of your starting field position alone. A formation give to Powers, and Powers is dropped there. Looks like Baltimore had gone over that play on the sidelines as both Takes and Dazzo were right there immediately to drop Powers for one. And I did say I was going to update Manning's kick return touchdowns for the season. He has three on the season, so he's a dangerous guy on kick returns if given the opportunity. Baltimore going to play press on their defensive side of the ball. He's dangerous in both the return and the passing game. They'll give it to him here, and he's going the wrong way. Loss of three for Manning. He made the one-handed catch, but Kaz McFly walks him backwards. Yeah, not not quite what you want to see is momentum, you know, just uh, was trying to make a play and they don't call him no fly zone for nothing. You know, the guy's he's locked down. So if he's if he's there, he's going to make the tackle and with his speed. You almost want him to be more down the field threat and let Burnham and Smith run the outside routes. Here's a toss from McLean. That one's caught. 
but it's well shy of the sticks, and San Francisco is going to have to punt. Yeah, it looks like the Vultures took the Sharks out of their rhythm on that particular possession. Um, just, you know, again, the Vultures are one of the top defenses in the league, and they can really clamp down and kind of impose their will on, on your best players. And, you know, for a rookie rookie quarterback, that can be a little bit intimidating, you know, even for even for veterans, you know, just having to play this Vultures defense. It's, it's a tough battle. You have to come and bring your A game every time you play them. Just gets the punt away, returned out here to the 39-yard line of the Vultures. Good return, and it's going to be a first and 10 for the team up three, two scores. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting some T-Roy gains here. Three, three, uh, just under four minutes. They're going to try to eat up the clock. They've got plenty of timeouts, and, you know, just no real sense of urgency. Just do what works for you here and milk the clock while you can. They will throw here out to Gaines on a little screen pass. Gaines with room. Gaines, a oh, wobbled across the 50, but he gets rocked. Yeah, that was Jacob Gustafson again, you know, laying the hammer down. Both players went flying about five yards, and it was just a huge collision. A bottle rocket Boom. here. Boom. Yeah. Everyone's all over the place, man. Ears are probably ringing. I mean, that was a big hit. Vultures, you know, now look at their formation now, coming out to throw the ball. Nice coverage from the sh Sharks. Pressure coming again, and Dazzo dropped. Franco Sinati was there in a hurry. Yeah, great pressure by the front seven of the Sharks, and, you know, Baltimore's defense kind of took uh, the Sharks' offense out of their rhythm. It looks like the Sharks' defense is trying to do the same thing to the Vultures' offense. Third and a country mile from the 49. Four receivers split out. Like with the slot men in. Dazzo with gains in the backfield will take a short drop. Dazzo to throw, flings it across the middle. Caught, but tackled short of the sticks. Good defensive stand there by Barry Barkley. Yeah, Barry Barkley, the free safety, just came over in coverage, helping out the corner. Yeah, good. Okay. No, that was his own defense. I'm sorry. He helped come, came down uh, in his role and helps uh, stop the receiver before he got a first down. Nice catch there by Edward Morgan on the 90 all slants, but he's tackled short of the sticks. And Baltimore will have to punt, I believe, Stephen, for the first time Ooh. today. Yes, indeed. Yeah, first punt, and it was almost blocked. And Manning will spin around and haul it in for a fair catch at the 11. So the San Francisco Sharks' last drive goes four plays, one yard, and they punt. The drive before that, 12 plays, 80 yards with a touchdown pass from Angus McLean. McLean, 13 of 16 today with the one touchdown and has been clean. No picks against this tough Baltimore secondary. And this field position starting at the 11. They're one for four on third downs. They need to convert some third downs on the drive. 4-3 look out of the Baltimore Vultures. McLean to throw. Well protected in the pocket. Tries to hit Manning on the outside, but he is out of bounds. And that's just what I was saying on the last drive, Stephen. Manning looks, you know, the part of a more down-the-field receiver. Yeah, you know, with, with his uh, with his build and his skill set, he, he definitely seems to be a deep target, uh, a deep threat target, but they, they're continuing to show that they want to use him underneath and on out routes also be good from him try and get him involved uh and, and box a guy out here goes mclean throwing a wobbler oh and it's out of the hands and incomplete he was trying to find the receiver but isaiah moss could not haul it in on the sideline first down 
Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of one-handed grabs. You know, everybody's trying to reel everything in with one hand here tonight. I I'd like to see some receivers try to get two hands on the ball and, and uh, help these quarterbacks out, get their completion percentages up. Use two hands, believe it or not. Here is a third and ten. Five receivers out here for McLean to throw. Oh. McLean pressured, and he will get dropped. They'll give him the forward progression to the three, but a sack from Baltimore ends the Sharks' drive right then and there at the three-yard line. Now Carter Abraham with good pressure, and you could see uh, afterwards McLean was, was kicking himself while he was getting up. He was very disappointed in that. He knew he should have th threw the ball. Two-minute warning, 21-7, Baltimore on top at home. San Francisco will punt. From his own end zone, heels on the back line. He will kick it away. And Baltimore will get a return out of this one. Decent return there out to the 38. And great field position set up by Giovanni Bolt. Yeah, starting at the San Francisco 38, and now a first down pretty much, you know, with Shark Tarkington. I mean, heck, you can get to the 33, and that's a makeable field goal for him. So just gain a couple yards. I mean, you do have three timeouts. You can you can be conservative or aggressive here if you're the Vultures. Just, turn, you know, what, what kind of points do you want here? Do you want six or do you want three? High formation here, Gaines in the backfield. Dazzo to throw, will toss it out to Gaines with blockers in front. T. Roy Gaines out across the 26 yard line and they will have a new set of downs there. Yeah, finally pushed out of bounds by Chad Guy who's gonna, who's gonna kind of be following um, T. Roy Gaines around everywhere he goes. And I think that's gonna be his, his special responsibility for this game. Dazzo to throw again, this time across the middle. It's caught. Lloyd Graham Jr. again, this time out to the 16, was working on Chad Guy. Heavily targeted here today. He's got five targets, four receptions as Lloyd Graham. And uh, right. just maybe uh, working in another layer to their offense here this week. I'm sorry, that was his sixth target, fifth reception. Receivers split out. Dazzo fires across the middle. Batted away there. Chad Guy got the hand of that one. And Chad Guy's a stud linebacker, man. I, I really like him. I, I like whenever I call San Francisco games. I enjoy watching him play. He, he's, he's a top-notch linebacker out there. Stuck with the Sharks here. Now in his third season, 6'4", 250 pounds. Second and 10 for the Sharks. That was just Dazzo's third incompletion of the day. 16 of 19 for one touchdown. He will throw again. And that one is the fourth incompletion. <laughs> but uh, it was Chad Guy again. And it got me choked up. Yeah, that's that man. Like I said, you know, he's, he's, I think he's the key point to their defense. You know, he, if he's having a great game, the Sharks are probably playing pretty good defensively. Now the scoreboard here is a little, little lopsided, but. Even then, you know, the guy's making plays all over the place. In the passing game, in the run game, I mean, he's just he's just dynamite. I love him. Both teams have all their timeouts. Bunch formation to the bottom of the screen for the Vultures. Gaines offset to the left. Ooh. Dazzo pressured and dropped. San Francisco got to him. It's the big Larry Kennedy. Yeah, and all four of the Sharks' defensive linemen actually got pressure there. Watch the, watch the offensive linemen all move back. All of them had got, you know, got bumped out of position, and it was just who's going to get there first. And on this particular play, it was Kennedy. A whole school of sharks on to Mike Dazzo. Is that a school? Is it if, if there's a lot of sharks together? Is it a school of sharks or a pack? I think that's right. No, it's not a pack. I think it's a school. Fish, but I don't know about sharks. Anyways, Baltimore, <laughs> whatever it is, Baltimore takes their timeout and they will attempt this Shark Tarkington field goal from about 37, 38 yards. Hold down, kick is up and good. It is 24 to seven, Baltimore on top. Yeah, and you can trust Tarkington from that range. I mean, that's a, uh, I don't wanna say that's a chip shot, but that's, that's where he, he can make money from there. 
now they will kick again and this is interesting Steven a, a point that I want to make is that Manning will receive this kick and in about 42 seconds and 15 minutes he will receive the opening kick for the second half too so two opportunities here for Manning depending on how far Tarkington can boot this ball it will be a return from Gabriel Manning out across the 20 spins back and only gets out to the 23 so nothing there but uh, San Francisco does have 38 seconds and three timeouts. Do you want to see him go for this one? Yeah, I'd like to see. Uh, I'd like to see McLean come out slinging here. I, I really would. You know, again, I, I, I think Matt Burnham is kind of their deep guy. So I, if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be Matt Burnham. But why not send Gabriel Manning out there while you're, you know, while you're at it? It says it might be a gaggle of sharks, and Steven says it's a frenzy. That frenzy sounds uh, frenzy about right. sounds right. Been, been the out of side arm so pass. Long. That one is caught out to the 30, and they are letting time go. I I don't agree with this. Yeah, you know, hurry up or call a timeout or something, but definitely don't huddle back up and, you know, I don't like the conservativeness. They might, I mean, I guess if you take a deep shot here and then call a timeout, you're still not in the worst shape, but you're just letting time run off here as McLean and, and this could be you know a rookie mistake is that he's not watching the clock as well as he should they give to Powers and Powers gets out to the 32 and now San Francisco will take a timeout and looks like they'll be confident to just chuck the Hail Mary yeah he saw the he saw the clock that time get Freddie Pollard the head coach for San Francisco finds his team uh down by a, a frenzy of points and is that might be a clock management lesson going on on the sideline right now. Yeah, going to try and uh, get the Sharks team back into it. And a deep attempt here, and for all intensive purposes, Baltimore will... I take that back. They're going to run a play here, bunch formation. Manning will lead it, and they will hand off to Powers, and that will end the first half of play. Interesting choice. But that is how it ends. 24-7, to Baltimore on top of the San Francisco Sharks through the first half of play to go. But for now, a halftime break. Steven, your thoughts on the first half? Well, I'll start with the, the Vultures who are leading. I thought they looked really sharp. They looked crisp offensively, kind of came out firing on all cylinders. Looks like they knew exactly what they wanted to do, which was target T-Roy Gaines. Uh, seems like they're putting him in the right positions. Uh, to, to exploit the defense to get positive yards. So it's a great job by the by the Vultures offense. You know, I've seen some stuff from the Sharks offense that I really like. Um, they kind of caught the Vultures off guard using the running back powers a little bit. But uh, I, again, I think their success is going to rely on the hands of Gabriel Manning and the arm of Angus McLean. So, you know, kind of get those two guys going. Manning's got nine targets, so they're on the right track there. Uh, defensively, I thought both defenses have played really well. It's just, you know, the Vultures are, are they're elite right now. You know, they've really got things figured out offensively, defensively, and, you know, it's tough to shut them down. It's tough to, you know, hold them to not score any points. But, you know, I, I think that there's been plays made by the front seven of the Sharks that have been really good. Some big hits by Barry Barkley and Jacob Gustafson from the secondary of the Sharks. Um, you know, it looks like Baltimore's knocking down quite a few passes. Kaz McFly's got two pass uh, pass deflections. Amon takes the linebacker, has one. Uh, and again, shout out Jeff Lowe for, for keeping up with these stats for us here. Everything looks really great. 57% third down conversion for the Baltimore uh, Vultures compared to 16.7. So one for six for the Sharks and four for seven for the, the Vultures. And that's... That's tough, and I think that tells the story right there. You know, you got to convert on third down if you want to be able to compete with with Baltimore. And on the uh, defensive side, the Sharks have actually, through the last two drives, held Baltimore to a field goal and a punt. So defensively, the Sharks are waking up a little bit, and if they can uh, continue to keep some of that going, it's going to help long term against the uh, against this Baltimore offense because they continue, like you said, to just look very sharp on the offensive side of the ball so it, it'll be interesting here to see through the second half what happens and it'll start via the legs of gabriel manning he's deep in his end zone but he's gonna bring this out out across the 15 across the 20 and manning will get to the 22 yard line yeah i, I still like bringing that out i still like the return uh you didn't kneel on it and take it at the 20 you got the two extra yards and 
you know, if you kneel on it, you're taking away your ability to ability to provide an, an explosive play. So I, I like the return by Gabriel Manning there. First and 10, under 11 minutes to play here as we get started in the third quarter. Andy Hamilton along with Stephen Hacker and Jeff Lowe on stats. We appreciate Jeff and love the stats team. That one's caught for a first down right out of the gate. San Francisco starts firing. Yeah, McLean, there you see the quarterback comparison. You know, a, a veteran like Mike, Mike Dazzo is, you know, putting up 165, but McLean's right right behind him with 100. And good recognition. Nobody was there under the underneath and just plopped it into Moss, let him get, uh, get the first down. And I think they need more slants like that, more stuff in the middle of the field to try and, you know, get some of these receivers open. They do have three really good receivers in LJ Smith, Matt Burnham, and Gabriel Manning, and it's just about getting them open in any way that you can. Hand off to Powers here, and Amon Takes will drop him after a, a gain of two. Yeah, and he's a guy you can trust. You know, him and Dazzo, they they pretty much lock down the middle of the field. You know, they sealed the edge on runs. They're, they're consistent linebackers. Three wide here. Powers, the lone man in the in the back of the field, offset to the left, in the backfield, excuse me. McLean tosses one. Oh, in and out of the hands of Manning. Dangerous throw. I thought that uh, the Vultures secondary member, Pete Lloyd, was almost going to pick that off. And I think that's where the, the drop came into play was I think Manning probably took his eyes off the ball to, to see what was going on with that defender. Was he about to get, you know, was he about to take the big hit or was he about to intercept the ball? And, and in all the commotion, Manning lost On third and eight from the 37, they need to find their way to the 45 in order to move the chains. McLean will take the shotgun snap, is going to sling it across the middle, and it's incomplete through the hands of the defender, but defended well on the defensive side for Baltimore. There was a whole gaggle of uh, Baltimore vultures there. Yeah, I still like the throw by McLean. Just, it looked like he led him just a little bit too much, but... You know, th those are the types of throws you have to make in the SFL, and it's good that he has the confidence to fire it in there. So a opening drive punt. The San Francisco Sharks out of the second half, or er, er, into the second half, I should say. Kick is away, and it is returned out to the 28. So Baltimore sets up shot. Like I said, at the half, Stephen, the Vultures on their last two drives have punted and been held to three points. So let's see what the uh, the Sharks defense can do and if they've made any adjustments at the halftime break. So far, Chad Guy leading the way with five tackles and two passes defended. Azo to throw. We'll swing it out to Gaines. Gaines is dropped by Chad Guy. Pickup of two. Well read by the linebacker. That's going to be six tackles now for Chad Guy. I mean, he's, again, you know, he's he's got a special task today, and that's follow T. Roy Gaines where he goes and make the stop, and he did a good job there. Formation here for the Sharks. Look like they're going to play press on these Three, four receivers, excuse me. Dazzo to throw, fires to Warfield, tipped up. Oh! Chris, the Sharks bump works, and they almost get the turnover. Well played there by Barry Barkley. Yeah, interesting that that the, the Sharks defense is taking this bump approach against the Vultures. It seems to be working at the line where they're, they're misdirecting the Vultures wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. So, I mean, it's that's an interesting strategy that they brought out today, and it's working for them. Again, it looks like you got to trust your your cornerbacks if you're going to run bump, and they have trusted them so far today. And a mixed bag of results here. Dazzo, quick throw across the middle for Graham. Caught it, tackled short of the sticks. San Francisco Sharks are holding up the fours. They think it's fourth down off the Ricky Flair tackle. Yeah, fourth and inches. That was a close one. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now we got a coach's uh, challenge. Tim Johnston is going to fire the red flag within inches from the 38. Look at this. Lloyd Graham Jr. will take a second look at it. Caught. Oh, it's close. It. 
I think they nailed the spot. That first thing will show it pretty good. Let's see if we can see the ball. No, nope, can't see the ball through yeah, the, nothing, through the thigh. But that first thing, well, I thought the ball was, was short of the first down. I, th I think they got the call right. Let's see what Stripes has to say. And yes, it will be short of the sticks. The Sharks get the stop. And uh, I, I mean, I can't even blame TJ for throwing that red challenge flag there. Yeah, it was really close. I definitely needed the replay to, to, to determine it. But once I saw that first replay, yeah, it looked like, yeah, and even the spot right now on the field looks like they got it perfect. So Baltimore will be down to two timeouts. San Francisco is at three, so still plenty of timeouts for San Francisco. But for Baltimore, they will lose one here in this second half, which is not the half you want to be giving away free timeouts in. Gabriel Manning makes the first man miss and gets out to the 29, so good field position for the Sharks. Yeah, good spin move to, to miss the gunner. The gunner was coming in hot, but a spin move and got a couple extra yards out of it instead of being hit right away. 59 McLean having a pretty solid day 15 of 22 four and a half yards a throw for one touchdown and I think to see them throw down the field a little bit more I mean 4.5 yards per throw is not uh, a superb number you'd like to see a little more action here McLean floats one oh hauled in I thought it was a pick for sure and somehow LJ Smith climbs the ladder and brings it in yeah, LJ Smith with another one-handed catch over the middle, covered tight by Amon Takes. But again, you know, Angus McLean making good throws. And to throw again from the 39 out route here is caught by Matt Burnham for four. Yeah, perfect on the day now. Five for five. Couldn't quite get the uh, couldn't quite keep his feet or couldn't quite keep his momentum in bounds. He had room to turn up field there, but get the catch, get the yards. It's a nice play. And those out routes, I mean, when they work, they're good. When they're out of bounds, it's just drive killers, man. To to you know, be you're playing a second defender almost with the uh, the sideline as opposed to the defenders on the field. All slants here, tipped up. Oh, most taken away. Amon takes was the one on the coverage and. It'll be third and six. Yeah, and the, the Sharks are finding good success on the slant routes. You know, the receiver probably should have hauled that one in as you saw it pop out of his hands after he was hit. But, you know, th that was a good, good play design and it was a good call selection. The old saying is, if it hits you in the hands, you're supposed to catch it. That's right. Four, four receivers spread out with a bump from Baltimore. McLean moves in the pocket, is able to get it away. It's reach caught. Out, reach out. From a yard oh. short. Oh my! I was with you, Stephen. If he just could have reached that ball out, Isaiah Moss, real close to the sticks. Yeah, and Mc, uh, McLean made a nice throw with pressure in his face. He got hit as he threw, so good composure there to, to complete the pass. Almost was a first down. The fourth and one offense still on the field. McLean in the shotgun. I. Sure hope they snap this and don't just try and draw Baltimore offsides. Oh, and they get the offsides. Free play for McLean. Fires caught. Burnham to the 48. San Francisco is firing on all cylinders. Yeah, they, they should decline this penalty. Uh, go ahead and give Matt Burnham the yards there. It looked like he picked up about 14 on that play. Uh, just again, man, you know, Angus McLean makes me so excited. I, I love watching this rookie quarterback, man. I, I just always find that whenever I watch his games, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. Has revitalized this Shark offense here in the second uh, half of play, their first drive after the half stalled out. But now Baltimore punt. The Sharks have a five-play, 19-yard drive so far. the top of the screen one receiver to the bottom is Burnham they'll fire for Burnham on a slant and he has got it to the 26 nice catch and a nice route from Matt Burnham and Tony Willis there the strong safety you know he, he's he's a he's a leader on their defense man I, I like watching uh, Tony Willis play too he, he he'll, he's not afraid to hit somebody really hard and that's one of my favorite things from a strong safety to come up and pop somebody a journeyman played for Alaska and Carolina in his career. 
Firing now, McLean. Diving catch made, Gabriel Manning. Highlight reel. And the blood's in the water again, man. Gabriel Manning, they're just, the Sharks, are they're figuring it out here. Another great throw on that kind of the oh post my. route. Just, yes, laid out, secured the ball, and a great play by the Sharks. First and goal from the nine. Three receivers split out. Two to the top of the formation. Gabriel Manning at the top with Powers in the backfield. They'll give to Powers up the middle, and he picks up four to move them closer to that line. Dazzo on the tackle. Yeah, good change of pace there. It was positive yards. You know, just get yourself a little bit closer. Maybe now you have a a wider assortment of route of your route tree that you can hit. Instead of nine yards, you just got to get five. So we'll see what the Sharks draw up. One in the backfield is Powers again. Tight end to the top of the formation. They will throw. Quick check down. Caught. Oh, short of the line to gain. Takes. Brought him down at the one. LJ Smith trying to sneak in. And LJ Smith is hungry to get in the end zone too. I mean, that's that's twice he was brought down right at the one yard line. The last time the Sharks were down here, they threw it through an out route to Moss. We'll see who they uh, decide to go with this time. Baltimore puts five on the line. McLean in the shotgun, probably a good choice against that five man rush. McLean pressured, gonna float one. Oh, they tried the out route and the defender was there. Hendricks Thornberry almost took it away. Yeah, that's, that's a dangerous throw. You know, Hendrick Thornberry is, is at the top of the interception leaderboard or, or is one of the top names on the interception leaderboard. So that, that's a risky throw right there. I I really think San Francisco is going to kick it here, and they will. But I would disagree. I think this, where you've struggled, I, I think almost that the touchdown from the one-yard line is worth the risk. Uh, I don't know. At this point in the game, I think the field goal is right. I still think you have a little bit of time. Your defense has been playing pretty good as of late. So uh, go ahead and let your let your offense get the points. Keep, keep the momentum that they just built up. And now bring your defense out. And hopefully you can get a stop. And then your offense comes out. And hopefully the next time can get in the end zone on that, on that first or second or third down. Noodle Father 99 says he uh, loves the game, think it's beautiful, and wishes it had franchise mode. Well, T Roy hits it right on the head. The SFL is franchise mode for All Pro 2008. Everyone here has the opportunity to become a player, uh, pick the playbooks, and pick the teams, as well as potentially own your own team in the future, uh, as well as coach them. So, plenty of opportunity in the SFL um, for you to make the choice of whether they're. Uh, you know, running to the outside, running to the inside, or throwing the ball deep. And um, for me, Steve, yeah. my only thought was, you know, with with field to drive on every drive because San Francisco has not had great field position all day. Um, you know, when you're one yard away, the difference between three and six is big, but the difference between having the ball and not having it is also big. And now the Sharks have it via the interception by Sim Franco Jr., the seventh pick in the SFL rookie draft. Great play. You know, that's that's a tough assignment over there on Daly Holder, but got his got his head around and jumped up, made a nice interception, and, and now here you are. You were just saying how uh, the Sharks haven't had good starting field position. Well, how is this? Yeah, I tell, I tell you what. Sometimes, man, this game, when you uh, when you are talking smack about how they should have gone for it from the one, it gives them a new opportunity just mere moments later. Gunn will dump it out to the fullback, who will step out of bounds, loses his footing. Get forward. That's Kelvin Bryant. Usually, fullbacks aren't the best on the outside. Yeah, that's not a particular route that I like to see out of the Sharks. I, I think they've got better options, and... Uh, you know, there you see it. You lose four yards. Maybe, maybe think about scrapping that. Powers, the lone man to the left. Two receivers split out. McLean to throw. Wants a deep ball to Ooh. Manning. And that one's taken away by the Vultures. Kaz McFly rises up and picks it off. And I think Kaz is in a competition now. It says, anything you can do, I can do better. One hands that thing. Look at this replay. Woo! My goodness. 
Goosebumps watching that one, man. That was a great play by Kaz McFly. In all three seasons of his young career in Baltimore, and you almost can't blame McLean for going up top to one of his best receivers, Gabriel Manning, to try and spark something. And now San Francisco's defense right back out onto the field at the 28. Flips it out to Gaines. Gaines will move forward and pick up eight. Good catch and run by T-Roy Gaines. Nine receptions for 77 yards. Leads the Vultures today. And Barry Barkley came down from the safety position to stop uh, Gaines' momentum. And, you know, I'm excited to get the Vultures' offense back out here now because I want to see them uh, get T-Roy Gaines involved. Heavy formation leading to the left. They will give the throw to Gaines out of the backfield, and he will get pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line, but a first down nonetheless. So I want to see what the Vultures do after they get past midfield. Because it seems like they, they get to midfield just about every drive without, you know, without any real struggle. But then, you know, it depends on what they do once they get past midfield whether or not they're going to have to punt or kick that field goal. And four linebackers for San Francisco. Again, heavy formation to the left. And again, it's going to be a swing out to T-Roy Gaines. This time he angled back inside. Long choice. And he will only get back to the line of scrimmage. And, and every time, Stephen, and they're in that formation, they run the screen to T-Roy Gaines. Yeah, and I was going to say, I think I think San Francisco maybe is getting a little wise to that right there. Well, and they need to if they're going to get back in this game, down 14. Handoff gains up the gut, and Chad Guy reads that well. And now, like you said, Baltimore are going to be in a third and eight right around midfield. Yeah, so, the, you know, these these play these play selections right here at this at this particular part of the field seems to be the the key point to the vultures offense if they get past it and they get down to about the 30 it seems like they take it in for six but if, if they kind of hang out around this midfield area they usually have to punt or, or they stall out for whatever reason you know san francisco yeah i, I definitely know san francisco gonna play bump throwing here oh thread, thread the, the needle, needle. by daily holder first down Yeah, just absolute dime, right? I think it went right between two defenders were, I mean, just right into his hands. Yep, squeezed it right in between two defenders, right into the hands of Daly Holder, who gets the first down. Veteran throw. Plants out of the Baltimore Vultures again is good for a first down. 4-4 four, four look, and they are most likely going to go throw the screen right down here to the bottom. And right on cue to T-Roy Gaines across the 40 to the 35. Yeah, you nailed it. Right on the head. They come out in this formation. They're looking to throw it to T-Roy Gaines on the screen. And they did it right there, but good results. Positive yards, eight of them to be exact. <laughs> well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's go. Yeah, if the Sharks aren't going to cover it, I mean, keep running it. Why not? Now they will spread four wide out in the bunch, and this continually draws the San Francisco uh, press coverage. Again, mixed results uh, so far. They will give to Gaines up the middle, and Gaines will move the chains, getting his way to the 32 on the fight. Yeah, and he loves to do the dirty work there. He'll, he'll gladly pick up that first down through the trenches. That's, that's what this guy's built to do. Thomas Patternity in the chat. Giving out some free advice. Get out your pens and paper. Screens are a... <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> well, write that part down. <laughs> write that down. It's a lot of uh, letters as they pick up a nine-yard gain. He says, screens are a sound strategy against a team that uses a lot of man coverage. So uh, any of you young coaches and coordinators, um, write that down because it uh, it's important. Fame advice for free. High formation here for Gaines. They will give it to him right up the middle. Gaines a little stop and go and then gets shouldered to the ground, but not before fighting his way to the 19-yard line. And there's your running back comparison on the day. You know, the Vultures invest heavily in their offense or their, uh, their running back position, and, and the running back comps show that today. 
the top of the screen. Another eye formation here. For Dazzo to throw, hit as he threw, dumped it off to Gaines, but Gaines cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. Actually will lose a yard, and it's not even T-Roy Gaines. It's Damon Morehouse who came in to relieve Gaines for a play. Yeah, and you can see the difference in talent, too, there, where Gaines probably could have uh, brought that forward and at least got back to the line of scrimmage, especially going up against a guy like Chad Guy. But, um, you know, you got to give the, game, the big guy a rest if he needs it. And off, Gaines up the middle, dropped again by Chad Guy. Well, we'll just get back to the line of scrimmage, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. 24 to 10, Baltimore still on top of the San Francisco Sharks. Flip ends of the field here. Put 11 minutes back on the clock. Get your fours up in the chat. Third and 11 for the Vultures. Dazzo to throw. Delivers it out to Gaines. Gaines one man to beat. Cannot do it. Dropped at the 16. And the Sharks are going to hold the Vultures to three. Yeah, you couldn't give up a touchdown there. The only thing better would have been a turnover. So you're hoping for a blocked kick, but... You know, like I said, Shark Tarkington's as good as automatic here. So, you know, got to come out swinging if you're the Sharks. Angus, Angus McLean, get your arm warmed up because you're going to come out throwing a lot this next drive. Sixteen. It'll be about a 32-33 yarder. Hold down, kick is up and good. And this kind of goes back to the point that I was making, Stephen, on the uh, earlier Sharks drive when I said they should have gone for it is you can't trade field goals at this point if you're the Sharks. Uh, I know there's a lot of game left, but you got to start, you know, scoring touchdowns and holding the other team to field goals. I mean, Baltimore's offense has just ran down the field on you. Most of the times they have had a mere, let's see here, one, I believe two times today and the one interception. So you've only stopped them three times down the field. You need more than just three. Yeah, and that's tough, you know, but uh, again, you know, at that point, I believe there was five minutes left in the third quarter. I think that that was the right decision at that point in time, because then on the next on the next uh, series uh, for the Vultures, they did get the interception and then drove downfield a little bit before they themselves threw an interception. So had they not given up that turn, if they had not given it back to the Vultures and they had scored, well, you know, we may be looking at a different ball game or, or a, different, a different method of, uh, uh, of approach. I'm just saying, one yard between them and four extra points. That's true. Uh, four, but, uh, four wide, none in the backfield. We'll, we'll, we'll just agree to disagree, Steve. I think we'll, that's what we're going to have to be. We're going to have to agree to disagree. See at the end uh, whether they're four points ahead or behind here. Burnham on the outside will pick up four uh, for a nice catch right in front of Freddie Pollard. Actually almost ran through him. Oh, so so okay. So since I said to take the field goal, and if and if they lose, well, now all of a sudden you're right because of that. Whenever we if don't they get lose to see by how four, play. if they lose oh, okay, by four, okay, if they lose okay. by four, right. then we'll Thank know. You for if clarifying. they lose by Thanks. anything more, then it's not really your fault. But okay, then you're fine. Uh, here goes Powers up the middle. He'll pick up a yard, so it'll be a more manageable third and five. This is going to be a critical one. You know, looking over at the stat sheet, thanks, Jeff Lowe, a one for nine on the day on third downs for the Sharks. So if they can make that two for 10, I think that's going to do a lot for their uh, their momentum. D7 to 10, Baltimore on top of San Francisco. We will get that score updated momentarily. Angus McLean almost fired an interception. Amon Takes just stuck his big paw out there and batted that one down. Yeah, and he's a he's a premium linebacker. This guy can do everything, and it's he's a good addition to this Vultures uh, defense. You know, whenever they whenever they brought him in, he's he's a good guy. He's 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 out everywhere on the field. Look at that. He was covering covering uh, Moss, but then realized the pass was going over his head and knocked it down. So third just an elite, season elite linebacker. Sharks from on takes came in, uh, I believe, during season ten. If I'm doing my math correctly, and. I'm not on the stats team, so I might not be. Um, and he gets the Vultures to force the Sharks into kicking this one away. 
I snap, kick is off. Turn man stands deep at his own 25 and will get out to about the 27, 28 yard line. And that is where Mike Dazzo and company will come back out. Dazzo today, 26 of 32 for one touchdown and one pick. That's good stats in my, in my book. I mean, I'll, I'll take that. There's a look at T. Roy Gaines numbers, 99 yards on the ground and 68 more, or excuse me, 97 more via the air. So, and they'll feed him again. T. Roy Gaines off the left-hand side with a block and Gaines will get out to the 47 before anyone at San Francisco even touches him. Yeah, and then you just you just alluded to it. He's now at 210 plus all-purpose yards on the day. So, you know, have a day, T. Roy Gaines. Yeah, and San Francisco needs to find an answer to that screen pass. I mean, it's really the only thing that they haven't stopped once today. I mean, they I take that back. They've stopped it at the line a few times, but usually it's because T. Roy Gaines will angle right. back inside instead of following his blockers to the outside. Not really, you know, any type of San Francisco defensive attack. I think that's one area where the Sharks can could find something is they'll probably throw another one here out to the left hand side except for Dazzo but Dazzo got rocked by Franco Sonati and that's what happens when the pass rush hits home before you can hit that screen pass and that's a good job there by the by Franco Sonati to rush through there and blow that play up so yeah I think uh, Dazzo is just about to get rid of it Bring up second and 16 for the Vultures, and they will put the bunch on, and San Francisco looks like they're going to press. Sharks rush four. They throw a quick one there for a nice pickup of 12 to Bishop Warfield. Yeah, Warfield won the battle in the coverage that time. Beat the beat the corner off the, off the press. Right down just short of the first down. But that was good work there. You know, they've been fighting over there. Him and Camden Hoffman have been fighting all day. Third and three. Point lead for the Vultures, who, if the score holds, will remain undefeated in season 13. The top. They will throw. Dazzo throwing the out route. Tipped up and incomplete. Good coverage there by the San Francisco Sharks defender who was playing man, Ricky Flair. He has been uh, a pace linebacker for this this Shark team. Yeah, he stepped up today, made quite a few good plays. And and, and I just want to critique Dazzo just a little bit there, if I may. It looked like he kind of rushed that throw just a touch. Uh, Graham wasn't even really breaking out of his route yet before that ball was in the air. Kicking here, Manning will try and return this one, it looks like, and he will spin, but only get out to the 16. No explosion play yet from Gabriel Manning in the in the special teams. I'm, I'm a little surprised at that. You know, usually, you know, big return at least, and, you know, maybe not always a touchdown, but a big return or something. But, you know, credit to the Vultures special teams unit for, for slowing down Manning. Four wide. Sharks trying to get something going here in the fourth quarter. McLean to throw. Pressured. Has to dump it off, but it's collected. And a nice nine-yard catch and run there by, I believe, LJ Smith. Yeah, and the... the he's, he's got a good repertoire with, with Angus McLean also. And I, I think the, the core wide receivers and the tight end for the Sharks, I think they've got something that they can build off of. Five catches, 37 yards. They give the powers here for the first down run to the 30 with 7.05 left to go in the fourth. And I'd like that... to see the aggressiveness turned up a little bit for the Sharks. I mean, I know they, they, the Vultures are kind of picking you off a little bit. They're kind of, they're kind of reading your routes, but I, I still think you need to come out aggressive if you're the San Francisco Sharks. Aggressive they will. Six wide, including the tight end on the top side of the line. Assassin King says hello. Hello to you, sir. Shotgun look for Angus McLean. Stands in the pocket, delivers, and that is a nine-yard pickup. Smith again. Yep. 
consistent, sure-handed guy. You know, they like to feed him over the middle on, you know, slants and out routes and stuff like that. But, you know, again, I, I'd maybe throw something deep to, to Matt Burnham or Gabriel Manning here if, if you get a shot. Three wide, Smith, or, uh, Powers the man off to the left-hand side of the line. They will give to Adrian Powers, and Powers with a block will get up to the 47 before Hendrick Thornberry can ramp him up. Okay, that's great, but you got to move. Now you got to move. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to rush you here, San Francisco, but you, you're down, you know, you're down 17. You got to put some points up. Now, you, you know, you either got to hurry up or, or take a deep shot trying to rush them I, th I think you like you said you're down three scores you got to be at the line you can't I mean I understand you're not wanting to to pressure them and I don't think you should pressure them yourself into a throw I'm not, but you I'm gotta, not trying to rattle yeah I don't want to rattle McLean here I want to let him work his magic to, you got to rush to get to the line you can pick up four yards every play but it's not going to win you this football game shotgun snap for McLean stands in the pocket is able to float Ooh. one and that's incomplete he was trying to find Aaron Razor, the tight end. And just, you know, this this Vulture secondary, they, they are. They're really, really good. You know, they, they have the nickname, the no-fly zone. So uh, specifically, Kasmic fly. But, you know, they're all very, very good in coverage. You know, Hendrix Thornberry, like I said earlier, is he's near the top of the leaderboard in interceptions. So, you know, it's, it's no easy task to come out and throw on these guys for any quarterback, you know, let alone a rookie. And that wasn't a bad throw by any stretch of the imagination. Bolt just made a good play on the ball. Oh, in the fourth. Four down linemen for Baltimore. They'll bring four. Hand off Adrian Powers, who picks up six. And again, they're going to huddle up. I, I, um, I'm questioning this. I, I'd like to see some urgency here, but good gain there by, by Powers. Five minutes to go in the fourth, third and four for Angus McLean. Throws the out route there, is caught by Matt Burnham. He gets out of bounds, which will stop the clock. Yeah, I, I, like, the, I like that at least. You know, you got your first down, you got out of bounds, you stopped the clock. Now, feel free to huddle up. Huddle up and talk about what you're about to do. But, you know, if you get a short game here and you stay in bounds, I, I think you really need to consider, you know, running a no-huddle offense. Right. Well, and this is a situation where you might see some veteran quarterbacks call two or three plays in the huddle so that the guys know what's coming next, whereas Angus McLean, one of the newer players, might not be ready to make those kind of calls just yet. And that might be why we're seeing some of this huddling up here, uh, Stephen, is that only two or three weeks into the season now for him might have some trouble calling some of that no huddle stuff. Yeah, because that is an art. You know, it, it takes a lot of awareness, and you, you and your receivers, you have to all be on, really everybody on the offense has to be on the same page to make it work. So that's that's great speculation. Five receivers spread out. Baltimore is going to bump at the line. They do a good job there. This throw is incomplete. It looks almost like Takes was running that route. Yeah, stride for stride, right on the hip of, of the receiver, Moss. Good coverage. Moot Binky 92 868 says this seems really cool. Definitely interested in this. Well, we're interested in having you. Discord link in there. You can click that link and join us on the field. You can go from your couch to the field in under a week. We'd love to see you moot on the field by next Saturday. This throw is picked off. Baltimore takes it away. It's Kasmic Fly. No more flying for the Sharks. The Vultures take it away. Yeah, it's a great job. You know, I, I, I was getting excited for, for my, my favorite quarterback or one of my favorite quarterbacks, Angus McLean. But, uh, you know, again, this Vulture's defense are really tough. And Kaz McFly is going to have his second interception on the day. First and 10 now for the Baltimore Vultures. They hand off to T-Roy Gaines. He works forward for six yards. That's a nice run there. And uh, they are highlighting Sonati. He didn't make that tackle. That was Barkley who came up. 
and Barry Barkley is a really solid, you know, free safety. You know, again, whenever I watch the Sharks, he's a guy who I also call out quite often. I formation here for Gaines, second and four with one receiver to the bottom, and they're going to make sure all the time that they can get off of this clock will come off, hand off here. Gaines dropped short of the line to gain. It'll be third and four. That's a big third down for the Sharks. You know, you need the stop or a turnover here. I mean, the clock's ticking. You don't have much time, and you, you need some magic to happen on offense to, 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 to get back into this game. But you definitely, it starts right here with your defense on third down. And four from the 34 for T. Roy Gaines, who's number 35. Have you ever seen more threes, fours, and fives in your life? And they were just over three minutes and four, under three minutes and 40 seconds before the first down run from Gaines goes out to the 43. They're going to flip that. And now with three minutes to go in the fourth quarter, a first down. Well, I may be on the stats team, but that doesn't mean I'm a great numbers guy. You just lost me in the wash with all those threes and fours and fives and what have you. When it was tackled by Ricky Flair, number 43. So interesting uh, coincidences here in the SFL. And sometimes your eye just catches on to all the threes and fours and fours and threes and fives that are around. Set formation for the Vultures. Going to let all the time tick off, and they're going to toss this one out to Gaines. Gaines is going to be wrapped up by Flair again, this time at the 45, but he stays in bounds. Clock will keep intensive purposes. Baltimore well in control of this one, but San Francisco showed some uh, some of uh, of you know highlight worthy plays. Some Angus McLean big throws and. Some big catches on the Sharks' um, offensive side and on the defensive side, some sacks and an interception by Sim Franco Jr. Yeah, and that that Sim Franco Jr. was a nice interception. That that that's a that's a highlight play for anybody. And off gains up the middle, Chad Guy will bring him down, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play. Baltimore on top of San Francisco, 27 to 10. Just trying to put this one away. Third and six. Sharks going to play press here to try and get their defense off the field late in this game. Gaines, Gaines, no, not Gaines, excuse me. They had the backup in Damon Morehouse to give uh, T. Roy Gaines a breather here late in this contest, and because of that, San Francisco will burn their first time out and get the ball back. And again, the difference, you know, in the in the roster spot that T. Roy Gaines takes up versus the backup, you know, it was... Uh, that one yard difference, I guarantee you, T-Roy would have fell forward and got that first down there. But, you know, uh, still a very, very steep uphill battle for the Sharks. So, you know, no harm, no foul for the Vultures. Kick is away. Manning on the return. Only gets to the 16. And kudos to Baltimore. They have bottled him up today. Yeah, that's a tough task. You know, again, you know, not even really a threat here today. Not no big yardage, no nothing. You know, it, it just he's been absolutely wrapped up. Tarkington did his job, making him kneel on it a few times, and then on the punt returns, the coverage team is always getting. Moot Binky has joined our Discord. Thanks, Moot. Welcome to the league. We look forward to getting you onto a team uh, in the near future. All you have to do is start chatting and getting to know everyone. Nice catch there by Burnham on the outside for three, and kind of had to work at getting the toes in bounds. Yeah, ten receptions in a game. I mean, that's that's a good that's a good day, good outing for any receiver. I think the most receptions I saw in a game this season was like twenty five. Shout out to Ken Gossett. 
here for McLean, who is in the shotgun. McLean to throw, dumps one across the middle to LJ Smith, who has been uh, open all the time across the middle there. To throw again, McLean, out route there, caught, and turning up field is Smith again. Yeah, showing off the route tree, and I think the no huddle offense is about four minutes late, but look how well it's working for him. So far, so good. McLean, high snap, fires this one down the left-hand mm. sideline, tipped up and incomplete. Bolt was there. He was looking for Manning. And Giovanni Bolt is just, you know, he's he's a ball hawk too, man. He just was waiting back there for that throw to come in, and then once McLean let go of it, he reacted and went and knocked it down. Center with powers to the back. McLean will dump one off. Collected there and ran by Matt Burnham up to the 48. Now they're going hurry up. Again, McLean pressured, has to dump it off to Powers. To get there, it'll be fourth and two. San Francisco will take a timeout. Okay, now, now's the time when you got to go to that special play. You know, that one play in your offense that you know is going to work. This is the time that you draw it up and you, you exit. Three LJ wide. Smith. Sorry, sorry about that, Andy. No, you're good, McLean. Out route there, caught by Burnham. Got the feet inbounds, got out of bounds, which stopped the clock. It'll be first and 10 from the 45. And that was the route I was going to say that maybe LJ Smith was going to run. Maybe an out route to LJ Smith here, because uh, he seems to be pretty sure-handed over the middle. But nice grab by Matt Burnham. Four wide here with the tight end on the bottom of the formation for McLean. Low snap, corralled. Out route there is caught by Manning for five, and they get out of bounds. So trying to prolong this game as much as they can. Yes, yeah, save your timeouts. You know, again, maybe get, get yourself into a, a little bit better field position where you have a particular play that you can draw up and uh, exploit the defense with. Look, two blockers in for McLean, who takes a deep shot, mm. tipped up, and incomplete, trying to connect with Manning, and Pete Lloyd was there. Yeah, the target volume is there. I like the target volume for Gabriel Manning in this game. You know, Matt Burnham's got a high target total as well. So, you know, I, I think that that's the recipe that they're looking for. Now it's just a matter of completing some of those passes and finding which routes are working for you. Maybe trimming out your playbook just a little bit. Four wide here, third and five. 38 seconds to go, San Francisco down to one timeout. Slings this one, and it is hauled in by Manning, but he's tackled inbounds at the 27 by Bolt. Will rush up to the line, McLean in the shotgun. Little bit of a low snap again, and he fires and completes this one out to the 17 for a first down to... Uh, the receiver, that is uh, Aaron Judge, again, down to eight seconds. McLean moves, floats in the pocket, and completes. And San Francisco will use their final timeout with just a mere five seconds left. And I know it didn't look like much, but that was actually great awareness and hands by the wide receiver there to haul that in because he was hit as he caught it. And so that was great, great uh, stick to it to bring that in. Five seconds to go, one, maybe two plays, depending on how quick you can sling it. And I would have liked to see that pose. McLean yeah, to throw. To... Oh, nearly picked off. Almost went the other way. The Vultures were right on it. Parker Shaw. Let's see if we can get him out here in, in maybe a, a deeper a deeper play. Uh, 
they have that post route. See, it looked like it was flipped. It looked like Burnham got the post on that one, but they ran that post to Gabriel Manning a couple of times this game, and I think this is right in that yardage that he got whenever those plays came to him. So let's see if they draw that up here. Can maybe uh, score a touchdown to kind of close this gap to make it a little bit more respectable. Yeah, and that was an interesting throw there, Stephen, because even if he catches that, it's not going in the end zone. It's not a touchdown. I think you and, and the clock is going to expire too. Yeah. Right. You got to fire to the paint here if you're going to try and score. E five wide for McLean. Short drop. Pumps once. Fires and it is incomplete. And that will end it. 27-10. The Vultures remain undefeated and get the win at home over the San Francisco Sharks. Steven, your thoughts on the game? You know, I thought it was a great game. Uh, scoreboard, you know, it's pretty wide margin, 17 points, but I thought the Sharks really came out today and fought really hard. You know, I think progressions for Angus McLean, they're starting to show. Again, you know, I thought he was, uh, in his debut, was uh, a really good rookie, and he's just showing improvement every week. And so now it's just about, you know, building that repertoire and and, and fine-tuning your offense to, to get some string together a couple of wins and whatnot. Uh, you know, T. Roy Gaines, with all the receptions and the yards, you know, it was just a monster game from him. Uh, I think everybody expected that from him. It's a good game overall. Andy and Ham. I was just going to say that uh, Kaz McFly had a great game defensively as well. I agree. Andy Hamilton, along with Stephen Hacker. We want to also give a special shout-out to Jeff Lowe, who ran our stats. Always appreciate our stats team. And the stats team is looking for more members. If you are interested in joining the league and getting involved right away, the stats team is an awesome place to start. You can have your name called out live on any broadcast you do and help the league. And today's player of the game is going to be T. Roy Gaines, and I think he uh, deserved that, don't you, Stephen? Oh, 100%. I mean, you see his rushing attempts, 21 carries, 116 yards, 100 rece 111 reception yards, and I'm pretty sure that he had, yeah, 15 receptions. So guy just handled the workload all game long and led his team to a victory. He definitely made his impact felt today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you next week.